Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we are strapping on our boots, putting on our shoes, or just going barefoot. It's up to you. To the state of New York. That's a heavy, that is a heavy hitter state. And we're not even talking New York City. In fact, pretty much all the stories I tell about New York are not set in New York City. But we keep going back there, and the stories are always, frankly, weird as s. Today we are talking Tagliatelli. Oh, sorry, Tagliatelli. What's his name? Uh, Taglianetti. I knew I should have eaten. A man living happily with his wife and his kids. We're also talking Reed, a father, though himself spouse-less. Does not mean loveless. Just outside of Buffalo, there would be a violent incident. And no, I know what you're thinking, it wasn't the Bills Mafia smashing another table. There were gunshots. And it would all lead back to a couple of clackety clackety emails that were, well, very angry. You know, the tone of writing and emails can be kind of very hard to tell sometimes. But the person who did this would make it very clear with a revolver. And just before we get into it, please subscribe to see two brand new true crime videos every week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. Let's give it a go. So first of all, let's say this, and I will say it. Imagine flying into Buffalo, right? And you, you land in Buffalo, Western New York, there you got, you got your bills, you got your delicious chicken wings, and... snow? <coughs> well, you arrive there, you hop in a car, and you drive about an hour and a half southwest, and arrive safely, I hope, in the village of Clymer, New York. And I say arrive safely because you might have to dodge a few drunk drivers, because it is a dry town. Dry shite, more like. No booze in Clymer since 74. Clymer is home to less than 2,000 people. And it's very picturesque with the forests and the windmills and the yada yada yada. Have to say though, this view would be a lot better with a nice cold one in my hand, hanging with the fellas. It's a small town, where everyone knows your name. And a name everyone would have known was Keith Reed. Super Nintendo Reed to you. In the year 2012, Keith L. Reed Jr. was 51 years of age, a native New Yorker. He was originally from Salamanca before landing in Chautauqua County, working as a school superintendent where the community embraced him. He had worked in the education system his entire life, studied it at Mansfield University before working as a teacher, then a principal, and finally a superintendent at Clymer Central Schools. Clymer, New York, home of the pirates. Attended by a little less than 400 students. When he wasn't uh, doing whatever a superintendent does, literally my only knowledge of a superintendent is The Simpsons. He was helping out in the Rotary Club. He was a member of the NRA. He loved golf. He loved tennis. Well, let me rephrase that. He liked all those things, but he loved his three daughters, Caitlin, Megan, and Allison. Keith Reed was divorced and had been for a few years, and it had been painful, but he was always devoted to his children. He had just walked his daughter Caitlin down the aisle, and Keith Reed was passionate about providing a good education for the next generation. Children are the future. I mean, that's what they say. I don't know how true that is. But Keith's future would come to an abrupt end just a couple of weeks after the start of the autumn semester in 2012. On the 21st of September 2012, the principal of Climber uh, Central, he was driving by Keith's brand spanking new house he had just bought, having recently moved to the area. Now this day was a Saturday. But the principal, driving past Keith's house, he noticed something odd about, about Keith's place. He saw Keith's two cars were still in the driveway. Now that was odd, and let me tell you why. Because that day, Keith, there was some kind of superintendent conference, sounds intense, in Albany. So he was thinking, oh, I thought Keith had to, you're not supposed to be... Then when the principal was driving by his house again later on that day, he saw the cars were still there, so he... Drove in, was like, you know what? Knock, knock, knocking on your door. He decided, hey, Keith, what's up? You're around? How are you doing this fine Saturday? No answer. Keith didn't seem like he was there. He was shouting, Keith, hey, you're in. Nothing. 
Keith was also not answering any calls that Saturday. Nothing. From especially from his daughters and Keith, like he he would move heaven and earth for his his girls. So like he would always if he didn't answer, he would call back straight away to see if everything was okay with them. And he was the same the Sunday. So now his daughters are starting to worry. 51 years of age, still a, you know, middle-aged guy, but they were like, oh, is he okay? Did he have an accident? Something? They called Keith's brother, Kevin, a former FBI agent, to go over and see if he was okay. And Kevin would find out he wasn't there. He wasn't anything. But the house was kind of odd. Money was, was laid around. There was like a, a bag, half packed, as if, you know, Keith had been preparing to go somewhere, maybe preparing to go to that, to that conference in Albany, when, while packing and getting ready to go, he had disappeared. Had he been interrupted by... something? The sheriff's deputies then arrived, and they noticed some things were off about Keith's place. One thing especially was that the outside lights on his house, they weren't working because the bulbs had been removed. It was a strange situation. A lot of things here were odd, were weird. Gave, it gave him a bad news feeling, but there was no signs of violence, no blood, no evidence, no nothing. No signs of, no signs of violence that autumn day. He had last been seen on the Friday night before the conference, out for Dinden with a friend, and now on Sunday he's gone. However, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be for long. Canines would lead the police out to hedges by his house. There, they found the body of 51-year-old Keith Reed. He'd been shot to death. Three times. Twice in the back, once in the chest. Execution style. A neighbor would also report to the police that they had heard three gunshots on the Friday evening at approximately 10 p.m. Likely, with the time from when he went out to dinner, Keith came home, he started packing, and whatever happened, happened then. So, who could do this? The heartbroken community shared its grief tonight over the loss of Clymer School Superintendent Keith Reed. In the tiny community of Clymer, about 100 people came to Clymer United Methodist Church to find healing and security after the shocking murder of school superintendent Keith Reed right up the road. As investigators spent another day combing Reed's property for clues, one of his three daughters told us by phone that nothing was taken from the home, adding to the mystery of a motive. Keith was beloved by the community. They welcomed him with open arms. And this is a small town. Like word gets around, especially if somebody's pissed off, you know, at somebody else. You're gonna hear about it. But there was none of that. In his own personal life? Nothing really. The only thing that was uh, like, hmm, weird, was that on the Friday, the dates believed he was killed, a guy had come into the school looking for Keith. He'd been asking to speak with him. No one knew who he was. He said he was from Connecticut and he was asking about a job. But that was it, Keith wasn't in that day, so this guy then just left. So by the way, you know, the scene was, the working theory was this. Keith arrives home after going out for dinner with his friend. He starts packing for his trip to Albany. Some mysterious stranger arrives at his house and takes out the bulbs from the lights that are outside. And then knock, knock, knocks on his door. Keith, in the middle of packing, goes downstairs Turns on the lights, but can't see if there's anybody outside his house. So he opens the door, goes out to have a look. Ambush. This guy shoots Keith twice in the back. As Keith is lying out on, on the ground, bleeding out. Once more, execution style. Who would ambush him? Well, one person quickly questioned was his on-again, off-again girlfriend. Kimberly. Love is a real bitch. So, did she... Did, did she have a something, something? Love gone bad, you see it a lot, did he piss her off, or was there another man in the snap? I just found out he was dead this morning, and then I show up and I found out he was shot, and now I feel like I'm a suspect. Never in a million years, no matter what he said or did, did I ever consider or conceive the thought of harming him or hurting him or living without him. Her alibi though stood up. 
And so other leads you had to be like, who else might have a grudge against poor old Keith? Well, one thing was that when he was first reported missing on that Sunday night in the police that rocked up, one of, one of the initial things the police actually did was do a ping on his phone to see if they could locate him that way. When the ping came back, it was all the way down in Harrisburg, over 200 miles away, like a four and a half hour drive from from, from where, where they were in, in Western New York. How the fudge did it get there? Calls to it were eventually answered, but not by whoever took it there, however it got there. They were ringing it, construction worker, hey, I found this phone. Somebody had tossed it. The, the phone had been thrown off a bridge landing in a construction site. So if the killer had it and taken it, they were long gone. It was then the sheriff investigating Keith Reed's murder got a call, a very frantic one. A woman on the line was very upset and she was calling from all the way down in Virginia. And her name was Mary Taglianetti. Okay, just relax. Hey, stay with me. Relax. This is gonna be okay, relax. Now, one of Keith's daughters was able to tell the police, because no one knew who the frick Mary was. Uh, she, she, Keith's daughter was able to tell the police Keith had gone on a date with Mary two years prior to this. She lived in Woodridge, Virginia, and she spoke with the police and she had a story to tell about Keith Reed. There it was. Keith's picture mm -hmm. saying 51-year-old Keith Reed shot to death. A couple years back in, in 2010, Mary went on Match.com and met Keith Reed. They had met while Mary was living in Saratoga Springs, where Keith was originally from. Now she was living there in uh, New York, having just separated from her husband of 11 years, Anthony Rob, he went by Rob Taglianetti. So Mary and Keith, they started clacky clacky, they hit it off, things were great. Now Keith thought the marriage was rockier than it actually was because eventually Mary would reconcile with Rob, her husband, and she would move on back down to Woodbridge, Virginia. Now, Keith and Mary, they only physically met once. They went out for dinner once, and then they, you know, after that, they had some dessert, if you know what I'm saying. But that was it. That was the same date Keith's daughter recalled. Shortly after that, she returned to Virginia. She returned to her husband, Rob, and that was that. Was that. Then, two years later, in spring 2012, she starts messaging Keith again on Facebook, telling him how unhappy she was in her marriage. Oh. Get a therapist, at least they're paid to listen to your bullshit. Anyways, they spoke and Keith, thinking she was either separated or divorced, she was not a married woman, then they start communicating. Things get steamy. Maybe things happen. And now Mary was telling all of this to the police. The spring of 2012, I had um, Facebook friend requested him and he wrote me a note saying, how are you? Okay. And that's how it kind of started. You know, the conversation just escalated and he wanted to call me. Okay. So then we would talk for a couple of hours while Rob was gone and we would trade emails. Anyway, Rob found some of the emails because I had accidentally left my email up. He got very upset. But then Rob Googled Keith's name found out where he lived, Rob starts getting dressed and acting very upset. And, and this was 11 o'clock at night, just recently, this last Thursday night. Okay. And she was telling him that her husband, Rob, had killed Keith. He'd gone up there, shot him dead. The marriage had been on the rocks for a long time, and I guess, well, he'd done the, well, it's not unthinkable. It's pretty damn thinkable. Rob had been an active Marine and he was now a historian at the Marine Corps Museum in Quantico. And he was originally from Mystic, Connecticut. There was someone else who said they were from Connecticut. And where Keith's phone was found, where it had been tossed, you would drive through there on your way to Virginia, Woodbridge, Virginia. It appeared from Mary's stories that Rob had found, stumbled across an email Mary had sent to Keith thanking him for the previous night's phone sex. 
He then confronted her about it. This phone smells like vagina. What's going on? She was honest. She told him. I'm telling you, I am 100% sure my husband did this. Okay. There's not even any doubt. Rob then demanded her passwords and sent some strongly worded emails to Keith. This was late August. But it was this long thing about, don't, don't you dare contact my wife ever again. And if you do, you're going to be sorry because I have the emails and I'll post it all over your school. Keith, don't ever contact my wife again. If you do, I will find out what school system you work at and take action. I did not divorce her, so don't get your hopes up. Get a life. Rob. Keith responded, Rob, don't contact or threaten me again or I will take action and tell your wife the same. Keith probably shouldn't have even bothered responding because Rob went insane after that. Emails, emails, emails. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna expose you. I'm gonna get you. I said that already. I'll print out these steamy emails and put them all over your school. Don't ta talk to me again. Don't ever talk to my wife. Yada, yada, yada. Like all caps. All caps. And after those emails, Mary told the police that Rad Rob got in a car and he drove off. I said, where are you going? And he said, where do you think I'm going? Mary thought he was just going to go up there and throw deck Keith here. Throw up, throw punch. And that would be that. But it wasn't that. But Mary said that when Rob came home the next morning, he said to her, Keith wasn't there. So Mary's like, oh, whew. You know, all right, nothing happened until a couple of days later when she uh, read the news that Keith Reed had been shot dead. Does this look like him? Yes, that's him, yes. So now where was Rob? Well, nobody knew. A couple of days after Keith's death, he told Mary he was going camping. He left a note. Bunny, I'm sorry about this, but I do need to get away and work out some things. I love you very much, and I think this will create a lot of stress for you, but don't worry about things. God will provide. I'm going to do that camping trip. I have enough leave to cover myself at work till I plan to return on Thursday. Thursday came and went with no Rob. And the hunt for Rob was on. The Chautauqua County Sheriff has issued an all points bulletin for a Virginia man wanted in the murder of Climber School Superintendent Keith Reed. This is the man he believes to be responsible for the death of Climber School Superintendent Keith Reed. Well, I hate that term, t person of interest, he's a suspect. And he is a suspect. He is who we believe is responsible for the murder of Mr. Reed. 42-year-old Anthony Robert Taglianetti from Virginia is considered armed and dangerous. His car, a gold Buick, was spotted near a national park in Virginia and he was pulled over. He surrendered without incident and he was charged with the murder of Keith Reed. On Sunday, we heard for the first time from Mary Taglianetti, who described the rocky relationship she had with her husband, Anthony, saying she wasn't surprised to hear about his arrest. I can tell you he was a very controlling man, and I'm glad he is where he is right now. He's guilty, and I'm glad he's there. We've had a, a rough uh, marital history. On his laptop, they found out that he had just booked tickets the same day as he was arrested. Um, for a flight out of America, a one-way ticket to Tel Aviv, Israel. So he was planning on just getting out of Dodge. Now, uh, Israel does have extradition with the United States, so they would have just sent him right back. But um, maybe he would have gone to Israel and then, you know, hopped over the border to like Lebanon or something, which does not have an extradition treaty with America. Virginia man accused of killing a school superintendent who used to live and work in the southern tier is back in western New York. According to the Chicago Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office, 42-year-old Anthony Taglianetti is in the county jail where he's going to remain until a court appearance tomorrow morning. Taglianetti is charged with second-degree murder for the September killing of 51-year-old Keith Reed Jr., who was found shot to death outside his home. He went on trial. Rob Taglianetti went on trial and he was pleading not guilty. The prosecution was saying it was exactly what you think it is. It's exactly what it sounds like. It was all about those emails. It was a jealous... Love, shit went down, bullets ended it all. Also, a receipt was found in Keith's garden, an ATM receipt linked to Rob's bank account. So, fair play to you, saying you did not do it. Also, in Rob's car, in a gold, gold ass Buick, which was also spot on CCTV in Clymer, upstate New York, uh, in that car under the driver's seat, they found a revolver. Nice. The revolver literally had. Keith Reed's blood on the barrel. So hard to argue kind of with the facts and the defense had an uphill battle, but they also had a plan. It was manipulation. 
Mary had orchestrated the whole thing. This is a story about manipulation and exploitation. Mary Taglianetti, the wife of Rob Taglianetti, is a master manipulator. She knew how to puppet people. She knew what strings to pull. She wanted her husband to find the sticky emails, they said. She wanted a showdown between the two men in her life. That maybe she was hoping Keith would be the winner. That he would kill her husband in self-defense. The defense also suggested that Mary was the one writing uh, all of these nasty emails to Keith Reed. For one thing, all of the emails sent to Keith were from Mary's email address. Now, uh, Rob had demanded access to her email so he could see what she was sending to him, and so he was using her email address to send it back. But they were saying, you know, Mary was the one who was writing all these emails. In fact, there was one tip that kind of seemed like maybe he didn't write it, and it's a very unique thing, is that in one of the angry emails Rob Taglianetti sent to Keith Reed, he refers to himself as a former Marine. Now, I'm Irish, but I've met US Marines and you're never a former Marine. You're always a Marine. So him referring, referring to himself in a, as a former Marine, no. All in all, the jury found Rob guilty of the second degree murder of Keith Reed. He was sentenced to 25 years to life. And there you have it. A good man, you know, who just wanted the best, the best for those random, especially for the youth who, you know, they're the future. Again, people say that, but I don't believe it. Ended, his life it brutally ended over some stupid ass fucking emails executed for it. A messed up case all resulting from a one night stand years before and some strange emails. The lesson from this one is, and I'm always trying to think of the lessons in these cases, is sometimes just step away from the computer. Sometimes you can leave those messages, you can just leave them on red, it's fine. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here, uh, watching this little video of me, you know, if you reach the end of this video, which is right now, and you're listening to me speak, it means a lot to me. It always does. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next little video real soon, so look forward to that. But until then, as always, please take care of each other and yourselves. Always take care of yourselves. Because I love you. Mike out.